Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Pakistan's ISI fueling Khalistan sentiments. Aid funding shortfall could push Afghans into famine. And anti-terror operations continue in Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan is the main force nurturing the drive to create a so-called Khalistan or independent homeland for Sikhs. And the extremists backed by Islamabad pose serious threats to India. Several radical elements project themselves as Khalistani leaders, but inputs gathered by intelligence agencies point to them having been planted by Pakistan's ISI. It has already been revealed that the Pakistani agency, ISI, trained pro-Khalistan separatist leader and chief of Varis Punjab Day, Amritpal Singh, in Georgia before coming to India. A report. In one of the videos posted on social media, Khalistani elements could be seen insulting India's freedom fighter Bhagat Singh. They are burning photo of Bhagat Singh by calling him a terrorist. In another video, a Khalistan leader called freedom fighter Bhagat Singh a traitor. Notably, these videos surfaced on the day India remembered Bhagat Singh. The revolutionary, along with freedom fighters Shivram Rajguru and Shukdev Thapa, was executed on 23 March 1931 in the Lahore conspiracy case. There has been a rise in Khalistani activities in recent days. Last week, Khalistan supporters vandalized the Indian High Commission in London. Several radical elements may be projecting themselves as a pro-Khalistan leader fighting for Sikh pride, but inputs gathered by intelligence agencies point to them having been planted by Pakistan's ISI. It has already been revealed that Pakistani spy agency ISI trained pro-Khalistan separatist leader and chief of Vice Punjab De Amritpal Singh in Georgia before coming to India. Agencies in India noted that Singh, who is on the run, was creating a private militia at his drug de addiction centers. बहुत स्पष्ट कर चुके हैं कई बार कि अमृतपाल अब तक अरेस्ट नहीं हुआ है पुलिस की तरफ से पूरे एफर्ट्स हम कर रहे हैं उसको अरेस्ट करने के और हम होपफुल हैं कि जल्दी हम उसको अरेस्ट कर लेंगे देखिए अब तक 154 जो लोग हैं कस्टडी में लिए गए हैं जो अरेस्ट हुए हैं इस केस में वेपन्स की जो रिकवरी है वो करीब 12 वेपन्स अब तक रिकवर हुए हैं जिसमें राइफल्स भी हैं रिवॉल्वर भी है राइफल्स में दो तरह की राइफल्स हैं तो वो सारी अभी फर्दर चल रही है इस्लामाबाद रोल इन सपोर्टिंग द खालिस्तान मूवमेंट इज अ डायरेक्ट कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ 1971 ब्रेकअप ऑफ पाकिस्तान व्हेन बांग्लादेश वाज फॉर्मड आउट ऑफ ईस्ट पाकिस्तान विद द हेल्प ऑफ द इंडियन आर्म्ड फोर्सेस Following 1971 war, the only thing Pakistan wanted was revenge and more specifically bleeding India with a thousand cuts. Thus post-1971 Pakistan's policy and strategical measures underwent transition and became entirely dedicated to hurt India along the religious, political and ethnic lines. In this way, the foundation of the Khalistan movement was laid. The ethnic cleansing, forced conversions, targeted attacks on Gurudwaras have reduced the Sikhs, Hindus and the Christians into a small fraction of a community in Pakistan. Yet Pakistan assumes to be the champion of Khalistani causes and support the Khalistan militancy. Some Sikhs are acting as tools and actively being supported by Pakistan, India's arch rival and its deep state. ये तिरंगे की शान बनाने के लिए सिखों ने सबसे ज्यादा खून बहाया है और अगर आज कोई इंसान उस तिरंगे का अपमान करता है तो मैं समझता हूं कि हमारे गुरुओं की शहादतों का अपमान है क्योंकि सिख जो हैं वो इस देश का इंटीग्रल पार्ट हैं ये देश हमारा है और हम किसी भी कीमत पे ऐसी चीजों को सपोर्ट नहीं कर सकते द प्रो खालिस्तान सेपरेटिस्ट सेटल्ड अब्रॉड are making repeated attempts to grab the attention of the world's Sikh community by indulging into violence. 
Various organizations in Punjab have already condemned the activities of pro-Khalistan outfits like Sex for Justice and called for strict action against those propagating anti-India movement. Although a huge force and money is being pushed in to destroy the youth and hamper peace in India, assertive vigilance and several crackdowns leading to multiple arrests have been able to contain the anti-India activities happening at the commands of Islamabad. The new generation in Punjab has totally rejected Pakistan's malicious propaganda and has opposed any such move that divides people along lines of faith. Hence, Islamabad should now understand that it cannot achieve its goal of forming a separate Khalistan either through conventional war or through other conspiracies. The prolonged political tug of war in Pakistan is only adding to the Pakistani people's persistent struggle for survival. Ignoring the urgent needs of their troubled people, the political leaders in the country appear to be only focused on mudslinging and trading blows, accusing each other of inaction and ineffectiveness. There does not appear to be focus on solving the pressing issues of poverty, food and medicine shortages, terrorism and the economic crisis. Let's take a closer look at the rapidly deteriorating situation in Pakistan, which appears to be heading for anarchy and chaos. A report. At a time when millions of Pakistanis are facing difficulty feeding their families, the Pakistani political elite continue to enjoy a luxurious lifestyle. Their apparent indifference and flippancy to the struggles of their people has not gone unnoticed in Pakistan. The incident added fuel to the ongoing political tussle between the ruling government and the opposition, Imran Khan's party, Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf, PTI. Khan, cricketer turned politician, who was ousted as Prime Minister of Pakistan in April of 2022 through a no-confidence motion in the National Assembly, is being accused of misusing his office to sell gifts from foreign dignitaries. Khan has been pushing for snap elections, a demand which has been rejected by his successor, Shabazz Sharif. In further escalation of political volatility, on March 8, police fired tear gas shells and used batons on Imran Khan supporters in Lahore as they planned a rally to kickstart the election campaign. With the country's leaders caught up in political drama, the country is primed for a further descent into instability and crisis. We have done the rally that we are not doing now. Because I am afraid that we want to do this, what are all the actions we are taking? What is the purpose of it? Is it that we are going to get out of this election? It is Pakistan's supposed leaders who are the ones causing the country to crumble. While Khan urges his supporters to hit the streets to demand early elections, the government is attempting to have the former Prime Minister expelled from all politics in the country. In this commotion, the general public's basic needs are being forgotten. In debt-ridden Pakistan, the rupee is plummeting and inflation is at decades high levels. Many political analysts, both inside and outside of Pakistan, believe that the country's state of affairs will not improve until the Pakistani army refrains from meddling in the country's politics. The condition of Pakistan, if it is seen, the main reason is the Pakistan army's control over Pakistan. The Pakistani army exercises control over three important dimensions of Pakistan, that is its economic affairs, foreign affairs and defense. The chief of army staff of the Pakistan army is the de facto chief executive officer of corporate Pakistan because anything which is manufactured in Pakistan from salt to steel, the Pakistani army has got a stake in it through its foundations. A country of some 232 million people, Pakistan is on a downward spiral where no one is ready to accept accountability for the country's deteriorating political and economic situation. 
The government lacks any concrete plan to bring the country's economy back on track. Political leaders are instead relying on foreign loans. The country has not been able to attract overseas investors due to political and economic uncertainty and a lack of skilled manpower. Pakistan's political and economic situation left the country an easy victim to China's debt trap diplomacy. Beijing, who is tied to Islamabad through its multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan economic corridor, remains in a position of power to further exert their will and influence. Pakistanis' uh, domestic woes, the economic crisis, the political crisis, is a fertile ground for the China to make its ingress. And China is waiting that as Pakistan slips and slides further, the Chinese domination of Pakistan will increase with each passing day. Decades of mismanagement and poor political and economic policies have left the country in the sinking position it finds itself in today. Pakistan, however, does not appear to even want to learn from past mistakes and remains eager to continue accepting foreign loans, seemingly pushing the consequences of such actions out of sight and out of mind. The Taliban takeover of Afghanistan has pushed the country into a spiraling humanitarian catastrophe. Acute malnutrition is now entrenched across the country. More than half the population of the country is living under poverty and people are relying heavily on aid services for even the most basic food commodities. Here is a report. A year and a half into Taliban rule and still millions of Afghans continue to be in a state of crisis. Acute malnutrition is now entrenched across the country. Threats of famine and civil unrest still loom over Afghanistan, where two-thirds of the people require humanitarian help and the crippled economy is unable to feed the bulk of the population. According to a report of Human Rights Watch, 95% households in Afghanistan have been experiencing insufficient food consumption and food insecurity. Not only that, recently the World Food Programme has revealed that a drop in donor funding could push parts of Afghanistan into starvation in 2023, adding that 9 million Afghans could be left without food aid. A huge humanitarian aid package after the Taliban took over Afghanistan in 2021 leading to foreign governments cutting development funding and imposing sanctions, helped avert a widespread famine then, but now those fears are rising again. It would actually be 9 million people who would not receive any assistance. This month, the 4 million would receive some level of assistance, whereas 9 million people in April would not receive any assistance. Um, when I mentioned earlier, six million people are at kind of the brink of famine. We wouldn't even have enough resources to serve those six million people to get any assistance. The World Food Program is currently short of $93 million for March and April, causing it to reduce rations to 4 million Afghans to 50% of what they need. Another 9 million people will lose access to food aid entirely next month if it does not receive funding commitments in coming weeks. The WFP comments are one of the first concrete signs after international officials warned that growing global emergencies and challenging economic conditions combined with Taliban restrictions on women could lead donors to pull back. In December last year, the all-male interim government ordered all foreign and domestic non-governmental organizations to suspend employing female employees as some female employees did not wear the headscarf correctly. The Taliban's move drew widespread condemnation from Western nations and international organizations. In response to the decision, many international aid groups suspended their programs in Afghanistan which led to devastating impact on millions of Afghans across the country, especially women and children.
Well, I think it's very much um, in the back of everybody's mind. And we just need to continuously remind ourselves that humanitarian funding as well as humanitarian action does need to remain apolitical. At the end of the day, it is mainly women and children who are the most vulnerable. And if our ultimate objective is to serve them and provide assistance to women and children and those who, who need it the most, then that's where our objective should lie. Yes, so every possible way that we can get access for, for women NGO workers to be able to continue working, we are having those conversations. And there is also at times a recognition that if there is a desire for women to interact with women, um, then you need women female workers um, to be part of that. And so they, while it remains a constant set of conversations, it is something that we are able to get some exceptions for. Ever since the Taliban group seized power in Afghanistan, the country is in dire need of humanitarian assistance. The World Bank was instructed to freeze $2 billion in aid. The International Monetary Fund followed suit. Overnight, Afghanistan lost their major source of income. The same month, the Afghan Central Bank misplaced all of their credentials and along with it their reserves. Afghanistan owned worth around 9 billion US dollars in foreign reserves, most of which was held abroad. Neither the central bank nor the Taliban can access it since the US opted to seize it. Humanitarian assistance cannot take the place of a well-functioning economy. For that, the Taliban must reform. The terror factory is located in Pakistan and along the line of control in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir are continuing to push in terrorists into Jammu and Kashmir. The purpose is to unleash violence in the Union territory at the behest of the Pakistan Army and the spy agency, the ISI. However, the Indian security forces are vigilant enough to give them a befitting reply. A report. Indian security forces along with Jammu and Kashmir police are carrying out a series of operations to uproot the network of terrorism. In the latest operation, the Bandibora police attached the houses of two overground workers for providing shelter and logistic support to terrorists. The properties belong to Abdul Majid Reshi and Muhammad Jamal Malik. According to police officials, the action was part of an ongoing crackdown on harboring terrorists and providing logistic support to them. The situation in Jammu and Kashmir has shown a considerable improvement, symbolizing a return to normalcy. The terrorists have suffered heavy attrition and simultaneously have not been able to replenish their dwindling cadres due to the effectiveness of the counter-infiltration measures. This has led to a sharp decline in the violence inflicted by terrorists. According to the Jammu and Kashmir police report, 56 foreign terrorists who hailed from Pakistan have been eliminated last year. I have said that the bachi who is left is to finish it. There are efforts in the past. There are a few cases in the Riyori Punch, where some people have infiltrated. वही लोग हैं जो पाकिस्तान से आकर के जिन्होंने डांगरी का वाका अंजाम दिया बेगना लोगों की जान ली कुछ लोग बाकी जो बारामूला और कुपवारा के जरिए से भी बर्फ पड़ने से पहले आए उनका बहुत हद तक सफाया किया गया है पिछले अकेले साल के अंदर 56 ऐसे फॉरेन टेररिस्ट हैं जो पाकिस्तान के रहने वाले हैं पाकिस्तान की एजेंसियों के जरिए से जहां पर लॉन्च किए गए और जहां पर आकर के दहशतगर्दी पाकिस्तान के बेहाब पे चला रहे थे उनका सफाया हुआ अभी भी कुछ फॉरेन टेररिस्ट बचे हैं ऐसे लोग जो पाकिस्तान से ट्रेनिंग करके वेपन लेके जहां पर लोगों की जान माल का नुकसान करने के लिए जहां के हालात को खराब करने के लिए जहां पर भेजे गए हैं उनका सफाया किया जाएगा उसके लिए कार्रवाई जारी है Besides infiltration of terrorists, the Indian Army is also worried about the flow of drugs from across the border. 
As per the Ministry of Home Affairs, there has been more than 75% decrease in net infiltration from across the border between 2018 and 2021 and more than 80% reduction in the number of terrorist incidents during the same period. Despite such efforts by the security forces in eliminating those infiltrating the line of control, the drug menace has not abated. In order to target youths and channeling finance for Pakistan-backed terror activities, Islamabad is using narco-terrorism as a new weapon in its proxy war against India in the Kashmir Valley. Jammu Kashmir police ki atank ke alawa jo dusri badi chunauti hai, wo abhi jo nasha ki badti hui taskri aur nashe ki badti hui lath jo naujawanon ke beech mein phalai ja rahi hai, wo hai. बहुत बड़ी तादाद में एक महिम के माफक जम्मू कश्मीर पुलिस हर जिले के अंदर जो टीम्स हैं वो उनके जरिए से काम करके जम्मू कश्मीर पुलिस ने बहुत सारे तस्करी के केसेस को जो पकड़ा है और कुछ एक केस जिसमें वेपन और ड्रग्स की दोनों की तस्करी पाकिस्तान की तरफ से इस तरफ आती है उनमें बड़ी सख्त कार्रवाई की गई है कुछ एक ऐसे केसेस भी हैं जो हमारी अपनी एसआईए स्टेट इन्वेस्टिगेशन एजेंसी और एनआईए नेशनल इन्वेस्टिगेशन एजेंसी को दिए गए हैं कुछ केसेस ऐसे भी हैं जो हम नेशनल जो जो एनसीबी है उनके जरिए उनके साथ मिलकर के कर रहे हैं हमारा ये तहैया है हमारा ये पुख्ता इरादा है कि इस जमन में जो हमने जंग छेड़ी है उसको हम लोग मुकम्मल ड्रग्स को खत्म करने की उसमें सब लोग मिलकर के काम करेंगे Pakistan's efforts to undermine normalcy in Jammu and Kashmir, particularly after the August 2019 constitutional reforms, is rooted in its decade-long proxy war against India. Islamabad should understand that any attempt to challenge India's integrity will be disastrous for it. It needs to make a hard choice now, find peace with India or blunder into an escalatory cycle. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.